Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com where I have a ton of lesson videos on how to get better at the guitar, how to practice technique on the guitar, how to go through various drills, learn the fretboard, etc. But none of that matters if we don't have a deeper reason for working on music that we are truly passionate about. So this video is a follow-up video to something I posted last week where I talked about that exact point, that we need to have a North Star, something that is an internal drive for us, that helps us along with music. And not only are we going to then have that fulfillment, joy, and meaning in music, we're also going to make progress way, way, way more effectively if we have a compass guiding us towards our reason that can only be right for us and true for us, each individual person. Nobody has to be doing it for the same reasons. So I'm turning these videos into a little mini series about finding fulfillment, joy, and meaning in music because it's so critically important and because I do teach so much about technical drills and how to get better and everything. And I want us to just take a nice big reflecting step back for us to find our deeper purpose behind all of this. So in this video, I'm going to go deeper on this point, and we are going to talk about various reasons that someone might be playing music. And a lot of these come from reasons that I uh, find valuable for myself. We can turn this into a conversation for, you know, what, why are we showing up? Why are we trying to play? What's driving us? What's going to help us? Um, therefore, have this feedback loop of improving drastically and having passion and love for the art form that we're going towards at the same time. So that's enough for the introduction. Let's dive in and go to our friend Albert Einstein uh, with a quote where he talked about his learning of music. Now there's a quote from him about love being a better teacher than duty. This is where that comes from. It's actually talking about his a violin practice. So Einstein says, from the age of six to 14, I took violin lessons, but had no luck with my teachers for whom music did not transcend mechanical practicing. I really began to learn only after I had fallen in love with Mozart's sonatas. The attempt to reproduce their singular grace compelled me to improve my technique. I believe on the whole that love is a better teacher than sense of duty. So that end part, love is a better teacher than sense of duty, is often extracted as an Einstein quote. But now we see, oh, he's actually talking about uh, music teaching originally in this. And of course, we can we can interpret any of this however we want to. But he's saying, no, when I really realized how beautiful these Mozart sonatas were, I realized now I have to improve my technique to play and access this uh, profound level of expression that I want to reach, as opposed to just working on technical drills. So pretty scary here. Uh, teachers whom music did not transcend mechanical practicing, right? We want, we want to hopefully av avoid that. And that's why we're having this conversation uh, right now. So for this video, Finding Fulfillment, Joy, and Meaning in Music, which is actually the name of this little mini-series. Right now, we're going to go into 10 reasons, 10 deeper level purpose-finding existential reasons for playing music. And these could, of course, extend to any art form or any form of expression. So if you're ever wondering, why the hell am I doing this? What is the point? What am I showing up for? Why am I practicing these scales? This happens to a lot of us, and from teaching for many, many years, I've seen it happen to students. So let's explore some of these reasons and feel out for yourself what resonates the most with you. This is by no means an exhaustive list or some scientifically studied list or anything like that. These are just reasons that I feel connected to. So surely there's some, you know, some stuff I'm going to be missing as well, but I have something to say about all of these because many of them are reasons that I feel moment by moment, every single day connected to for why I want to play music and express myself through any type of art form. So number one is being a part of the conversation. This is the way that I put it. I like uh, phrasing it this way. I think listening to, paying attention to, receiving anything that other creative people or um, people who have refined a craft and have expressed themselves, any kind of, in our case, music, right? So listening to music, it's everywhere all our lives. And you can think of it as this ongoing conversation that is happening that, oh my gosh, all these people are saying something and putting it out there in this way that transcends time, it transcends space, and people there, we are learning about ourselves from lyrics and music that other people have put out there. So there's this sense of just wanting to be a part of it, I feel like, when something makes you feel good that someone else did, 
there's this reciprocity that kind of kicks in like, hey, I want to contribute to that. And that's what I think this being a part of the conversation is like, I, I want to be a car part of this conversation, this human ongoing conversation that has been since the beginning of time and will for however much longer humans are alive. Sorry to go dark there for a second. But being a part of the conversation is this uh, sense of creates this sense of belonging and a sense of connection in a spiritual like kind of way. Like we can very privately work on music and still feel like we are part of this dialogue that's happening. And think, think of a child, a baby trying to learn how to talk. They start making sounds and they start making words and maybe don't know what they all mean. Like, I think be the beginnings of working on music is kind of like this. Like, oh, I've heard people doing this thing. And some of it sounds like this. And some of it sounds like this. And I just want to join. Okay. So just being a part of the conversation is how I would put it. That's number one. Number two is interpreting the outside world. And many of these may sound like they overlap, but I, ha I kind of have distinctive ways of thinking about each of them. So interpreting the outside world, this is classic, you know, reason for, for doing art. And I think of this, there's two sides of this coin. One is it opens up our awareness. It opens up our listening, our paying attention. We pay attention more when we have a reason to pay attention more, right? Paying attention. And I don't just mean to music. I mean to everything, right? Nature, interactions, things you heard, things you saw, random things, things, experiences from your childhood, uh, whatever, relationships that you're in, like interpreting these things. And I don't even mean processing them emotionally. That's later on the list. I just mean that this is a way to take what we see, what we hear, what we experience and filter it through something, right? And if we didn't have that, I think it would feel like there's less of a reason to pay close attention and paying close attention will make us feel more in the moment and make us feel more alive. So it contributes to that feeling of fulfillment and, and purpose. Let's go on to number three, the flip interpreting the inside world. I love this one. I really feel deeply connected to this one. I think of music and, and creativity as this endless exploration into the internal world. I, I think of it as similar to like if someone wants to go, you know, sailing the seven seas or go in deep, deep into the wilderness and just explore, explore, explore. It's like the inside psych, psyche version of that, right? So self-knowledge, introspection, reflection, like exploring yourself. What can we learn about ourself by playing or even just noodling around with music and being especially being creative with it. So a lot of these have to do with kind of the more creative version of the art form. And a lot of the technique that we work on has to do with just getting the tools together, the skills together to be able to express ourselves more freely, which, hey, that's the thing I say at the beginning of almost all my videos, sound guitar lessons, where I teach musicianship skills. That's all the technical stuff. So we can express ourselves more freely. So this is my favorite one. I could sit forever. I, I'm big on journaling. I, I've done it since I was a little kid. Journal, 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 write, 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 random stream of consciousness. And music feels very similar to me, right? Just play, explore, practice, write, compose. What do I find about myself? How do I become more knowledgeable about who I am as a human by doing that? So it's a, it's a great way to work through our own internal landscape. Number four, simply feeling something so, so simple, so important, right? Like there's no shame in this one. There's no, there's nothing wrong with this just being the main one, right? Like what do we associate with being depressed? Like be, being numb, right? Not feeling something, not feeling excited about anything. Well, simply feeling something and in the end, everything comes down to a feeling, every desire, every drive, every activity we want to do, every, everything comes down to a feeling, right? So of course, music and art is, it's all about the feeling, right? So it's okay if our purpose is, I just want to feel joy from this. I just want some joy in my life. I work all day. I want to come home and I want to feel those warm and fuzzy feelings or those goosebumps from getting to play a little something that just feels good to me or sounds good to me. And the more we play those things and they do feel good and sound good, the more we have a reason to practice when it gets hard. And that's the kind of the point of this whole conversation right now is that real practicing and improving is crazy hard. So if we're not in touch with why we want to do it, then when it gets hard, we're going to stop. We're going to quit. If we're only doing it to, to be better, 
then there's no way we're going to work through how difficult it is to actually improve, right? You, we have to get to that point where it's hard. We, we hit up against the wall and we say, no, but that result on the other side of the wall is so worth it. Even if it's this, right? That feeling of joy, that feeling of release, that feeling of uh, connection, right? And that brings us to the next one, number five, human connection. So this is different than the being a part of the conversation type of connection. I'd say that's a much more kind of like spiritual realm connection, like you're just a part of something that people do. This one, I mean, like tangibly, just tangibly connecting. By that, I mean, you 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 go to jam sessions and connect with people. You have a band and they're, you're, you have close friends and you're on tour with them in a van for hours and it feel, you feel connected to real people. You sing a duet with someone, whatever, right? It, it's a wonderful way to connect with people. Um, you get to play something at like holiday times for your family or something like that. So human connection, this is a, this is a huge reason alone that a lot of people will play music. And of course, a huge reason a lot of people get into music because you're around people that you respect or like or feel connected to, and they're playing music. So you want to be a part of it. You want to be connected with them. So human connection. Um, number six, this is uh, one that I really like. And I think it comes through in my teaching because I think just being challenged, period, just being squeezed, just doing something where you're not really sure it's, it's beyond where you think you might have the capability to, to pull through and make it happen. That is, I mean, it comes to, these all overlap, right? Because that doing that and achieving what we want it to achieve or being challenged and getting through it, uh, creates a, an amazing feeling of satisfaction. And again, just comes down to the feeling thing again, right? It, it, it feels like a, an endeavor alone that is worth pursuing just to be challenged, right? So this is this is like someone wanting to run a crazy series of marathons or somebody wanting to climb a mountain or whatever, just being challenged. So this one I subscribe to very much. And if that's not you, that's okay, right? So when I get into practicing and when I talk about practicing or exercises on my channel and this part kind of, I get excited about the sport of it. I get excited about just the challenge of it. So I had a teacher that used this word you stress. And he said, he hadn't been sick for 20 years. He said, yeah, I haven't been sick for 20 years. And he said, I think it's you stress. I think it's the positive stress, which is what that means. It, that stress, 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 stress from pressure. In his case, it was performances like classical guitar performances, which are extremely exposed, very nerve wracking to work towards something like that, have the stress, have the pressure, but have a release for it, have um, an end point to it where all of the positive chemicals come in afterwards and you have this, this healthy reaction to being stressed, accomplishing something and feeling amazing about it. Um, so little kind of anecdote there about being challenged and use stress. Let's move on to number seven. Um, this can seem similar to, to being challenged, but just it is different. Refining a craft. Just, I get excited about this too. Just the craft of it, right? Just the skill of it. Like it's a martial art. Like it's like it's um, just truly a technique. And this is why I'm okay with technique, right? This is the sport, the practice for sport thing a little bit too. I'm okay with pure technique. I am very, very aware of where any technique exercise will apply to my more kind of creative and expressive and artistic level of, of wanting to play, but just the craft alone. And that can be anything really like songwriting craft, right? Or lyric writing craft. So it doesn't have to be only technical craft, but this is just a fun, 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 uh, hobby to have, if nothing else, just to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to crack the code on this thing, right? I'm going to refine this craft. And, uh, it's just, it's just an exciting way to live, to have something that we can feel, uh, that positive about working towards. So number eight is very kind of vague where I would just say confidence. And by this, I think it comes from, I think it comes from just being an interesting person. And this is what I mean here. Just, just having something in, in our life that adds variety. So I don't know what, you know, you may or may not be into, but having music in our lives, um, I think 
adds variety, adds interest, gives us something to think about, to chew on, to talk about, to you know have conversations with other people about. And I think that that adds a lot to just feeling confident, just feeling like a well-rounded person. Like, yeah, I have this really interesting hobby that goes really deep and there's no end to it and I can always learn something. And and I worked on this today and I worked on it or I have a recital coming up here and da 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 da, da. So just, I think just adding to our, our sense of, uh, our own personality and feeling good about who we are. So pretty vague, pretty vague, but I think, I, I hope I articulated that well enough to make the point. Confidence. Uh, number nine is just straight up health. And like, of course, all of these overlap, being confident is healthy, the you stress thing is healthy, et cetera. But like this, uh, there's a lot of evidence for music affecting the brain affecting the nervous system in a very positive way. And music therapy is a real uh, practice that affects people. So it's just healthy. It's just healthy. Music, you know, I think any hobby, any any challenge, anything we're working towards is healthy. Any sort of kind of practicing and being challenged and getting through the to the other side is healthy. But I mean music specifically. Music is just extremely healthy for the brain. And it uses... Uh, a large, supposedly a large portion of our brain, just from, I like to read about this stuff. I don't, I can't say I know more than just having the little statements from things I heard, but that's a perfectly good reason also, right? There's no wrong reason. We just want to be connected to our reason and know, you know, and just being like, yeah, this is a good thing to just have in my life for the rest of my life because it's good for my brain. Like that's okay as long. And, and of course we want to enjoy it too, but that's okay. My grandmother sadly is very advanced in uh, stages of dementia. And I went and played guitar for her recently. And she's not able to track or follow anything, can barely, can't make sense of anything. And when I go and play guitar for her, she lights up. I mean, it's, it's incredible. She lights up and she starts singing along and she whistles along. I played you know, some of the arrangements I talk about on this channel. I played like my Autumn Leaves solo guitar arrangement for her and she whistled along like the exact melody the whole time like she was on with the melody and i was trying to play music that she probably you know knew from her lifetime but not being able to you know follow a conversation at all and then be able to follow the music like that is amazing like what is happening in the brain where music is so <laughs> it's deep in there right so just sharing you know something rather personal but really mind-blowing when i when i experienced that and i think it's related to this topic here of of health and how music affects the brain lastly is kind of an obvious one for art forms expressing and processing emotions um you know you're angry ugh, go take it out on the guitar or write a song about it or just you know rip it on a hard blues jam <laughs> backing track or something like that nothing better than than having an outlet like that for our for our emotions for this roller coaster of a ride that it is to be a human but having an outlet is really important in a totally different way that i'm going to talk about next week but th in this way i'm talking about it i just mean emotional outlet so which one of these resonated with you the most which one did you feel like that's mine, right? Or maybe a couple of them. I would love to know. Let me know in the comments and what's missing from this list. Like I said, I just I just wrote these down, right? As like my reasons, things I feel connected to, things that really drive me, things that feel critical and important to me, reasons I wake up in the morning. But what's missing? Is there something for you that's not on there? If so, also let me know in the comments. That would be awesome. So next week, continuing this little series, Finding Fulfillment, Joy, and Meaning in Music, this very casual kind of discussion series that uh, I'd like to have in contrast to my super, super deep didactic, tactical, uh, millions of chord shapes and techniques like I do with many of my other videos. In continuing with this next week, we're going to talk about having an outlet in a very different kind of way. And I'm going to add on to this point of really finding meaning and more the flip version of it where we want to avoid the meaninglessness of practicing, 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 but not knowing what the point is, right? Does that sound familiar? I think many of us, if not all of us have experienced that, some of us more than others. So I'm going to talk about that next week. Just that's the point of all, all this whole conversation. Let's not get into that. I should practice this. I should practice this. This person says, I need to practice this. I'm going to just do it. I want to be better. I want to be good but why right but why if we can stay connected to why and these multitude of reasons which even just one is enough 
and it could be anything for you. If we do that, we're going to avoid that, what I often call the wall of meaninglessness. And I'll talk more about that next time and the importance of having a musical outlet. If you don't have my chord chart called Chords with Color, I always give away something free in my videos. That's a PDF. That's a really, really, really cool chord chart that is just totally unique compared to other chord charts. Shows a bunch of alternate options for basic chords, shows chords through keys, shows 20 of the most common chord progressions. Uh, really helpful uh, resource. If you don't have that already, you can grab that with the link in the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color. Join me next week for that next video about having an outlet and avoiding the wall of meaninglessness. I put up a video every single Tuesday. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.